We've talked about the five main mechanisms of hypoxemia, but now let's go back to a very basic but important idea regarding respiratory failure. And that idea is, even though the lungs both take in oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide, respiratory failure does not necessarily cause both hypoxemia and hypercarbia. And in fact, it turns out that when we look at our causes of hypoxemic respiratory failure, only hypoventilation typically results in elevated PaCO2. The others generally do not. So why is this? Well, basically, in all these other mechanisms, CO2 is either not affected or less affected than oxygen. In the case of low FiO2, breathing in gas low in oxygen doesn't mean you can't breathe out CO2 easily. For a VQ mismatch, we talked about how it's caused by that sigmoidal oxygen dissociation curve. But CO2 does not have a sigmoidal saturation curve. So even in the presence of VQ mismatch, you can eliminate a lot more CO2 from areas with a high VQ ratio to make up for less CO2 elimination in areas with low VQ ratios. Now this is only true to an extent, and with severe extreme VQ mismatch, even CO2 ends up being affected, but clearly CO2 is affected less than oxygen. And then shunt, again because of the dissociation curve, it's more problematic for oxygen. And finally, as far as diffusion defect, CO2 diffuses about 20 times more easily than oxygen, so there's very little problem with that. Now this is all quite interesting, but it actually gets even more fascinating. Because the fact is that when you're hypoxemic, your body is stimulated to increase ventilation because it's trying to take in more oxygen. And in some of these cases, that might help bring your oxygen up a little bit, although maybe not bring you back to normal. But what it'll definitely do is to help you blow off more CO2. So as a result, in all of these cases, you can actually have not just normal but decreased CO2. 